Welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on equivalent fractions. Some stuff you should know already are the basics of what fractions are, uh, the parts, the numerator and the denominator, as well as basic multiplication and basic division. So make sure you know those and let's get started. So what exactly are equivalent fractions? Well, equivalent fractions are fractions with the same value, but they just use different numbers. And in order to go from one fraction to its equivalent fraction, you have to multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So for example, let's say we have this. That's one whole. Now we break it up into four pieces. And what fraction is shaded? Well, four total pieces, one shaded, that's one-fourth. Now, what happens if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. Well, that's going to give me 2 over 8. But what exactly is happening? I want to show you uh, in the diagram here what's going on. When we multiply by 2, what happens now is each of our pieces will now have two pieces. So we'll have 2, 4, 6, 8 total pieces. And of the 8 total pieces, 2 are shaded. Now, I want you to make sure you understand that even though we changed how many pieces were there, we didn't change the size of the hole. That doesn't matter. That hole, it stays the same size the entire time. What we're doing is we're changing the size of each of the pieces. And how do we do that? By multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. Let's take another example. Let's say we still have one fourth, but this time we multiply both the numerator and denominator by three. Well, that's going to give us three twelfths. Now what happens is when I multiply by three, each of my pieces here will now have three pieces in it. So this is going to have three, that's going to have three, that'll have three, that'll have three. So three, six, nine, twelve. So I'm going to have twelve total pieces. And of the twelve total pieces, what's one uh, fourth of those twelve pieces? Well, that's going to be three because that's what I had here to start with. How about here? We still have one fourth that's shaded, but now we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by a four. And like in the last example, what's going to happen is each of the pieces here is now going to have how many? Well, I'm multiplying by four, so each of these pieces is now going to have four in it. And that's going to give me four sixteenths. So I have four pieces here, four pieces down here, four pieces over here, and four pieces over here. I now have a total of 16 pieces in my hole, okay? Of those, in the 1 fourth, I'm going to have four of them. One, two, three, four. Again, I didn't change how big my hole was. All that's happening is that I'm breaking down that hole into different sized pieces. And how do I do that? By multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. So here's another example. What fraction is gray? Well, this is the gray area here. There's two pieces that are gray out of a total of three pieces, so that fraction is two-thirds. But how can I write that differently? Well, if I multiply the numerator and denominator both by two, what happens? Each of these pieces will now have two in it. So now two-thirds becomes four-sixths because I'm putting two pieces in each one. So I now have two pieces in that part. I have two pieces over here and two pieces in the yellow. So that's six total pieces. Of the six total pieces, four of which are gray. Here what fraction is gray, we still have two thirds, but what if I multiply the numerator and denominator by four? Well, that's gonna give me two times four is eight, three times four is 12, so that gives me eight twelfths. So that means I'm gonna have 12 total pieces of which eight are gray. And that's exactly what happens here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now let's go into creating equivalent fractions with multiples. Well, this is just the mathematical part. We have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, just as we've said before. So here we have two sevens. If we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10, we'll get 20 over 70. How about here, four-fifths? We can multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator, each by three. And that's going to give us 12 over 15. 
Now I want to be clear, it doesn't matter what number you use to multiply the top and the bottom. As long as you're multiplying the top and the bottom by the same number, you'll get an equivalent fraction. Here we have 1 half. Let's multiply the top and bottom by 11. That's going to give us 11 over 22. So 1 half is equal to 11 over 22. How about here? 7 ninths. Well, we can multiply the top and bottom by 5, and that's going to give us 35 over 45. So 7 ninths is equivalent to 35 over 45. Okay, now let's take a look at creating equivalent fractions with factors. The last time we did it, we created equivalent fractions with multiples. So we multiplied the numerator and denominator by the same number. This time we're using factors. So what happens is you divide the numerator and denominator number. So just exactly the same thing, but instead of multiplying, you're dividing. So let's take a look at our first fraction, 15 over 45. Well, we have to make sure that we have a common factor for 15 and 45. Basically, what number can divide both 15 and 45? Well, I'm going to pick 5. So if we divide 15 by 5 and 45 by 5, we end up with 3 over 9. So 15 over 45 is equivalent to 3 over 9. Let's take a look at another example. We're actually going to use the same numbers, 15 over 45. But instead of dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 5, we're going to divide them both by 15. Now, 15 divided by 15 is 1, 45 divided by 15 is 3, so that's going to be 1 over 3. So 15 over 45 is equivalent to 1 over 3. Now our answer here, 1 over 3, is actually called being in simplest form, or lowest terms. All that means is, we can't reduce our answer anymore. There's no factor we can use to make the numbers 1 and 3 in the fraction 1 third any lower. Therefore, it's in simplest form. How about here? 21 over 35. Well, if I'm using factors, I have to divide. Well, what number can divide both 21 and 35? Let's pick 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 35 divided by 7 is 5. That's going to give me 3 over 5. So, 21 over 35 is equal to 3 over 5. And how about here with 18 over 36? Well, what number can divide both 18 and 36? Let's think of the biggest number that can do that. Well, that's 18. So 18 divided by 18 is going to be 1. 36 divided by 18 is going to be 2. That's going to give us 1 over 2. And that, again, is our answer in simplest form or lowest terms because we can't reduce 1 over 2 anymore. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go. All right, let's take a look at our answers. For the first three questions, we have to create two equivalent fractions using multiples. Well, that means our numbers are going to be bigger. So for 1 7th, we could get 2 over 14 or 3 over 21. For number 2, we could get 18 over 20 or 27 over 30. For number 3, we could get 8 over 26 or 12 over 39. Now it's important to know that we're using multiples to create equivalent fractions. That means that we could have used any number we wanted. For our examples, I just used the numbers 2 and 3. I multiplied 1 7th uh, both by 2 to get this. I multiply 1 and 7 both by 3 to get this. It doesn't matter what numbers you use. I want to stress that. You could use 10, and that would be 10 over 70. And that's absolutely fine. But these are just examples. Your answers may vary. For numbers 4, 5, and 6, remember, we're using factors, which means that we're going to be dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So for number 4, we can get 12 over 18 and 8 over 12. For number 5, we could get 10 over 14 or 5 over 7. And for number 6, we could get 9 over 18 or 3 over 6. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go.
Okay, so let's go over our answers. We have to write each fraction in simplest form or lowest terms. Remember, those terms mean the same thing. So we have to make sure that we're not just using a common factor to reduce. We have to get it in simplest form. So for number one, our answer is two thirds. For number two, three fourths. Number three, 11 thirteenths. And number four, four ninths. Let's review. Fractions with the same value but using different numbers are called equivalent fractions. How do you create equivalent fractions? Well, you multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. When a fraction cannot be reduced anymore, it is in simplest form or lowest terms. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Questions? Comments? Leave them down below. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.